I have a beautiful tenderloin here. It's wrapped in mushrooms and prosciutto, and it just needs some puff pastry. Beef Wellington. Most people think it's really difficult. I'm gonna show you my method on how to do this super easily, and of course, absolutely deliciously. First step to making an epic beef wellington, you gotta make a mushroom duxel. So what does that fancy word mean? It means a whole bunch of chopped up mushrooms, shallots, some onions, some spices. And we're gonna do a combination of smoke and sear with our grills and our flat rock. It's gonna be amazing. So start off with a whole bunch of mushrooms, break them apart into pieces, pop them in a food processor, and we're gonna break these down into smaller, more manageable piece sizes. This is actually gonna take away a lot of the liquid, concentrate the flavors, and we're gonna get a lot of great flavor in there from the Traeger grill. So, pop on the lid, like that. Make sure it's locked. Pulse them. And do it in batches. If you wanna chop them by hand, you're more than welcome to. I'm not in that club. And you don't wanna make them a paste, you just wanna get them finely chopped. We got a cookie sheet here. Load them up in there. Oh, come on. All right, any big chunkies, put them back. And just keep going with the rest of your batches of mushroom. Come on, let's go. Bring your tray in. Now, here's the thing. If you've got really big chunks, pull them out. Snack on them, do whatever you want, but you want them to be about the same size. Um, and then you wanna add in some other ingredients, okay? So we've got our mushrooms in here. We've got a couple things we're gonna add. We've got some shallots, really lovely fragrant shallots. They're gonna give a lot of moisture to this dish. Um, and then I've got a little bit of garlic, okay? Uh, we've got some fresh thyme, lots of it. And this is where you really do wanna take the time get it, the time, to get fresh time, okay? So you wanna come in and you wanna give this a complete stir, get these all incorporated. Salt, which will actually draw out a lot of moisture out of those mushrooms, okay? Some black pepper. So now you have this lovely tray of chopped up mushrooms and we're gonna go to the grill for half an hour to smoke them. That's it. So while our mushrooms are smoking, they're on there for a while, it's time to talk the beef of the matter, which is this beautiful beef tenderloin right in front of me. Now, this beef tenderloin, you'll notice, is pretty trimmed already. It's nice and even from one side to the other. And one of the key things is that you can do this at home yourself, or maybe you have a great butcher that can do this for you. No matter what, you want it to be about even all the way across, a good weight. You wanna see some beautiful flecks of fat in there, and then you wanna get it seasoned up to the grill. Because before we wrap this in all that deliciousness, we are going to actually sear this off on the flat rock today. So let's get started with seasoning. I'm gonna use coffee rub. And one of the key things for me, this flavor, I think goes fantastic with all things beef. So you wanna be fairly generous all the way through. Roll it over, make sure you get all that deliciousness covered. And then we're gonna go to the flat rock. Pretty simple, it's on medium high heat. Now before we do this, let's go check our mushrooms. They've been on for about half an hour now. Take a look at this. Now, as they cook every five to 10 minutes, what you wanna do is you wanna actually move them around and they shrink up a lot because mushrooms and those shallots and everything else that was in here had a lot of moisture in them. Now, one of the key things is we're trying to concentrate these flavors. It's got beautiful wood-fired flavor in this now, and we still want to get rid of even more of this moisture. So we're going to go to the flat rock with this and also our beef tenderloin. We're going to sear off the beef tenderloin, get it crispy on all edges, and we're going to get the rest of the moisture off these mushrooms. One of the things that's going to do is actually concentrate the flavors of the mushrooms, which is exactly what we're looking for in a mushroom Excel. Time to get this beauty to the grill. I've got this gorgeous seasoned beef tenderloin. It looks fantastic. Seasoned on all sides. We're gonna go to the grill and we're gonna get this 
each individual side all seared and delicious. Searing just means we're gonna caramelize the exterior. Searing doesn't actually keep all the moisture in. We just try to change the texture to give it more flavor. It's a whole lot of sizzle happiness going on here right now. So, tongs on this side for the beef, spatula on this side for the mushrooms. Spread them out and we're gonna griddle them up to get rid of more of that moisture. Every minute to minute and a half, you wanna turn that beef tenderloin so that it gets evenly seared on each side. So if you don't have a flat rock or a griddle at home, one of the things is that you can actually do this on a cast iron pan or a nonstick pan on your stove top. It just takes a little bit more time. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. We're gonna turn. And you can see we've got some beautiful color definition already happening there. Some beautiful searing happening. Okay, so about every one and a half minutes, I've been flipping this tenderloin. We're literally just getting to the last edge now. As you can see, we've got great color definition, all that delicious searing. It is ready to come off the grill, and then we're gonna cool it down. On the other side, we have the mushrooms. They've been beautifully rendered out. Lots of goodness coming, you know, all that concentrated mushroom flavor. They are done. We are ready to go and get these cooled off and then assemble our beautiful beef wellington. So it's all about some assembly required. Literally, this is the stage of our beef wellington at this point. I've got mushroom duxelle cooled to room temperature. I have got my beef tenderloin absolutely seared off, nice and cool. I've got a little bit of Dijon mustard. I've got the biggest pain in the ass plastic wrap laid out right here on the cutting board. And I've got this, this is prosciutto. And you really do wanna make sure you get the one that has the little sheets of like, I don't know, plastic wrap or whatever that is in between. You wanna lay down all these beautiful pieces of prosciutto. So you wanna put four here, four there. Cause basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take our prosciutto we're gonna lay it down on this plastic wrap, and then we're gonna layer in the flavor. So we're gonna layer in the duxelle, we're gonna then layer in the meat, and layer in some mustard. So, take the pieces. If they break, it's not a big deal. Don't stress about it, it's just prosciutto, okay? You just need to get eight slices laid down. All right. So I have the eight. I'm gonna actually put down 10 because I squished together a couple and because I've got two more here, so I might as well use them. <sighs> Prosciutto's done. Here's the thing. You could go and grab a spoon. <laughs> you could go and grab an offset spatula, or you just grab your hands, okay? And I'm telling you right now, this is a heck of a lot easier with your hands. Uh, because basically at this point, you just wanna spread it out. Um, I don't think that using a spatula is gonna be any faster than this. And once you have this laid down, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure it's nice and thin all the way through to the ends of the prosciutto. All right, prosciutto, duxelle, delicious. Yeah, that's right, baby. Totally seared, gorgeous, beautiful tenderloin. And we got some mustard. So here's the thing. Do the one side and then lay it down. Now, I love this mustard. If you have a spicy mustard at home, you know what, Bob's your uncle, you do you, boo. I'm gonna use a regular French Dijon, that's it. All right, pop that down. This side, coat and mustard as well. Now, the best part is, is that, you know, if you're doing Christmas or you're doing Thanksgiving or you're doing any holiday at all, everybody, this could all be done ahead of time. So, mustard's done, Dixel's done, prosciutto's done. Mess clearly made. And here's the thing, use the plastic wrap to your advantage. It's a pain in the ass to lay down, but it does work really, really well, okay? Bring this side up and over, okay? Pull it back a little bit. And then you're gonna take this side, pull it back over. And then what you wanna do is pat it down nice and neat. Bring this other side back up. And you wanna press it down, do it nice and tight at that end. So, it needs to go to the fridge to chill before we put this in some beautiful, gorgeous puff pastry, put a little egg wash on it and bake it to golden perfection. All right, we've got our beautiful beef tenderloin all assembled. It's ready to go. 
literally the last step before we go to the grill is this. This is puff pastry. So you wanna take a full sheet of puff pastry. Sometimes they come in three partitions. If you can get the ones like this where they're completely one sheet, it's always easier to work with. We wanna make sure we actually just roll this out just a wee bit in order to make sure it'll actually wrap around the lovely beef tenderloin, okay? So we're gonna give this a little roll. Beef Wellington is not complicated. It's just little bits and parts that you just have to assemble together. All right, we are always, always making sure that this is now thick enough, flattened out enough, it's ready to go. And here we have it, everybody. It's chilled, it's ready to be unwrapped, and we're gonna place it on this puff pastry, okay? All right, so it's in the middle. We're just removing the plastic wrap. Discarding that. Once you have that, what you wanna do is you wanna bring this side up here, smooth it down, and pull that back. Then you take this end, you pull it up, and those two ends need to meet. It's really important, okay? Now, once those ends are met, you wanna take this bits, you wanna tuck them in, nice and neat, same thing. Make sure those ends are nice and covered, just like that. And so it becomes a really lovely package of puff pastry goodness. Now, one of the things I would recommend is that you always wanna put this on a baking sheet with a Traeger butcher paper, and you wanna put it seam side down. And there we have it. Now, the last thing I wanna do, I'm gonna grab a knife and I'm going to score this. Why am I scoring this? It has everything to do with just making it pretty and nothing to do with anything else, okay? Um, sometimes I put vines on these, sometimes I put leaves on them, and sometimes I just grab a knife and literally don't go all the way through the puff pastry, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a diamond pattern. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Okay, our puff pastry is done. It's scored, everything's looking good. The grill is rising in temperature to 400 degrees. We've got our egg wash, and we're gonna coat this all with our beautiful egg wash and get it glorious and ready for the grill. And there is one last thing we have to do before we go to the grill, and it's probably one of the most important things. I don't know about you, but I can't tell what temperature that is, but there is one way you can. And really easy to track that. Got the meter probe. We're gonna go in and we're gonna make sure we monitor this on our phone. It's gonna give us the predictability factor, which is also gonna let us know approximately how long it's gonna take to cook. And of course, the most important thing, the temperature inside this beef wellington. So you wanna go in on an angle. There we go. Thickest part right in the middle once again, and we're going to the grill. Woo. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. So when it comes to temperature, it's a personal preference. I like to shoot for 125 degrees. I think that's a perfect medium rare. It'll rise up just a couple of degrees. At my house, that's what we go for. If you want it a little more rare, go to 120. If you want it medium well, uh, reevaluate your friends. I don't know. Our beef wellington has been on for a while now. It's golden, it's delicious. The meter let us know that it's perfectly come up to temp, 125 degrees. And now we need to get it off the grill, get it to like a cutting board and just let it rest for at least 10 to 15 minutes. Whew. There we go. And conveniently, because it's on the paper, you literally can lift the paper, put it right on your cutting board. So much easier. Now, go have a cocktail five, 10, 15 minutes, let this rest. You'll thank me. Our beef wellington is beautiful, it's rested, it's looking gorgeous. We're gonna pop the meter out, it's still pretty warm, okay? It's time to slice this beautiful beef wellington. So grab a super sharp knife, okay? Come in and you want good quality slices, which means to me, at least an inch thick, okay? Look at how flaky that pastry is. Oh my gosh, this is like delicious goodness. I'm gonna pop my knife right underneath this slice. I'm gonna show you guys how perfect it is. Look at that. Perfectly done, 
Beef Wellington, succulent, moist, perfect temperature, wrapped in that beautiful puff pastry, the mushroom duck cell, the prosciutto, the mustard, all seasoned up beautifully with our Traeger beautiful coffee rub. This is a meal that looks complicated, but it really isn't. So that's my version of Beef Wellington. It's super easy, it's delicious, and it's totally approachable. One of the great things is, is that there's lots more recipes just like this. Make sure you subscribe to the Traeger Grills YouTube channel. We've got lots of information. Oh, and by the way, just follow all those other social things too, okay? All the things, all the things, you guys know what they are, but definitely follow the YouTube channel for more recipes just like this. Super delicious.